Hey everybody, this is Human Factors Cast, episode 29. I don't know why we keep coming back every week. It's like we're masochists or something. We got a lot of VR news uh, this week, uh, curated by a VR person. That's a little curious to me. Uh, we also got, guess that, Human Factors making its triumphant return. Uh, now that we got a solid connection with Billy. Uh, but we got a fun show for you. Stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about. Human Factors Cast starts right now. Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Billy Hall. Hey, everybody. How's it going? There he is. And Blake Armsdorf's in studio. What's up, everybody? How we doing? Billy's got new glasses. I'm excited. I'm I'm, always... I'm, are you excited about my new glasses or just excited in general? Both. I'm new glasses. Yeah. Definitely the new glasses have me hyped. I'm getting my new pair sometime soon. Got an eye appointment on Wednesday. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I, I got to have my eyes dilated on Saturday. Ooh. That's yeah. Fun. I'm going to be blind. You can make fun of me. Woo. Put my hand in warm water. Or is that when you fall asleep at a sleepover? I never, never which one that is. That's the sleepover one. That's the sleepover one. Sure. Oh, right, right, right. Well, well, oh, I've been playing that new app, Fire Emblem, that Nintendo put out so I can get all the digital waifus. It's amazing. Yeah? You like it? Did you say digital waifus? Yeah, it's a... The thing is all Fire Emblem, so that's pretty much what 90% of the characters in Fire Emblem are. Attractive fantasy anime characters. Ooh. Well, I'm happy to have you guys back on the show. I missed you last week. We had Woodrow, who did a great job filling in for you guys. Yeah, thank you, Woodrow, for Amazing. coming on yeah, and thank killing you, Woodrow. it. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, we're not here to talk about us and waifus and and glasses and eyes being but we dilated. Could be. We could be, <laughs> but we are here to talk about Human Factors news. This is the part of the show all about Human Factors news. Now, this could be anything from virtual reality, automation, psychology, design anything that has to do with the field of human factors. Blake, what do we have up first? Yo, so for who dating in their VR app, the Wi-Fi for your users will be able to Oculus avatar and room features, allowing everyone to watch Hulu's 360, 360 degree content together, while paid subscribers will also be able to hang out in a virtual room and watch 2D content on the big screen. What do you guys think about this? So this is cool. When, so, can, when can we podcast through virtual reality? That's what. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Now, what do they mean by the idea of friction? Like, if you have a fight with one of your friends or your you don't have a girlfriend, will Hulu dissolve that friction by showing everyone the notebook so they can have a good cry? Yes, they send you a counselor immediately, and it fixes everything. No, no. What they mean by friction is, Billy, if I wanted you to come over to my place and watch something, how how much work is that for you to hop in the car, drive up here? and watch something on my screen. Now, if I can share my avatar in the same digital space as you, we are sitting together on a virtual couch watching the same thing, we can converse like normal. That's that's what they're talking about when they say no friction. Okay, there's no latency really then. Well, they're just talking about the friction of like the day-to-day -day stuff. There's still going to be latency issues. That'd be kind of oh, interesting too, what the latency's like because... I thought this was cool because I have, like, brothers that live in different countries, and we right. like to watch right. Game of Thrones and shit. So I was thinking, like, how awesome would it be to watch Game of Thrones VR together? Right. Uh, yeah, well, you cool could stuff. all see the naked Tenaris together. Well, hey, you ooh, can invite hey. your mom to it, too. Dragons and boobs, man. Look, Dragons here's and the, boobs. Here's the thing. Uh, I got some bad news for you. Game of Thrones isn't on Hulu. No, it's not. But so... there's still other stuff like that. It, I mean, this is just setting a precedent, right? That... Hulu's app is doing this for v their VR app is anyway. So I don't know. HBO yeah, is, question, can't be far question, behind. Can't we already do this with PlayStation VR? Isn't that already a thing you can do? Um, I'm not quite sure if they have it in virtual reality. I know they have like a virtual reality Hulu app so you can like watch the digital screen, but it's the shared space that's different about mm -hmm. this story. Uh -huh. Actually, based on the article, too, it said that the PSVR and, I guess, D Daydream, which comes from Google, both of them are not... They're not getting it. ...not putting any of this together. Like, they haven't right. put their strategy out for how they're going to do, like, their social content with VR. Right. All right. So, Blake, what's up next? 
All right, so another VR story, but in this case is a much different field. So a surgeon in Mexico City is ditching painkillers by bringing virtual reality into the operating room. Dr. Jose Luis Mosos Vasquez, Vasquez, excuse me, has actually been <laughs> using immersive technology on his patients as a replacement for complicated sedatives for years. It's a revolutionary new form of pain relief that could change the way that not only we experience surgery, but how we recover from it as well. This is super cool because I've got, I'll let you guys jump in, but I just thought it was an awesome technique to throw and to be like a part of VR in the operating room. Blake, you're falling into the Nick. Tr- Last week, I had the news stories, and after every single one, I said, "This is cool. This oh, is interesting." God. <laughs> ah, that is so cool! Oh my gosh! Duh. Okay, I don't understand this. So, I so he puts straps me to the machine, and he straps me to the machine because I have I don't know I just got out of surgery and it's a little tender, or I have a broken. Not like in the middle of surgery, like he's cutting me open, but just afterwards. He puts me in his, slaps me in his VR machine, like the open fields that I can float through, and it'll take up all my attention. So, no, not really. So, here's what's happening. I mean, this is so what I read in the article. This guy's been doing this for a while, but what's certain that you have to have the patient conscious for? So they still use a little bit of local. But what they're doing is with pain, they're putting our experience, what that experience is. Hold on. So they put they put the VR headset on. They give you the local anesthetic and they perform surgery. Then, so what they're talking about about being able to recover is you don't have that headache. It'll cut back on addiction too. I bet. I that would be kind of interesting how that plays out. But Maybe. basically, golf is just distracting you from what's going on. So obviously, it's got to be kind of in threshold for a surgery. Kind of a strange idea. To- so so like. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say the except, um, what it says is actual reality Pichu. So uh, it, well, I'm imagining not tripping, but they're, it, it, it's really interesting. This um, uh, is interesting. This is so, no, I, I feel like. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. When I, when I looked at this article is, ouch. <laughs> like to go, to forego painkillers under surgery, even if it's minor, ouch. Um, my second thought was, this is re- a really unique, novel sort of way to incorporate virtual reality into um, the medicine field. Like, there have been um, virtual reality applications of like treating phobias, but this is this is completely new to me. And and the thing that is most interesting to me is the idea of presence. So we in the virtual reality field have not really. I mean, we've defined presence, but it's hard to quantify. Now, I'm wondering if we could make a study that kind of says, okay, does does presence sort of overwrite that physical pain? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. What do you mean by presence? The idea that you're someplace else within the virtual reality? That's exactly it. Yeah. like So immersion kind of. Immersion refers to like the senses. So like how immersed are you? How many senses can you mask? presence is more feeling like how do you feel like you're there right and and you don't need a whole lot to invoke I see, I see, I see. yeah so this is i don't know this is cool okay. this is there i go again blake i think it would be really cool if you actually could play games in it and the guy's playing virtual simulator doing the exact same surgery that's working on him right then and there well i was so, uh, <laughs> the meta see, all. i was wondering like what would happen if they like mask the actual procedure as a virtual reality experience like like let's say you're getting a cyst removed from something right and and in the virtual right. reality ex, uh, in the virtual reality experience it's like a butterfly uh, like floating around you in a forest or something, and then it lands on that spot that they're actually touching, and the butterfly is mapped to the doctor's tools. So it's incorporating. So they they almost feel like because there is some anesthetic, it right. they'd still feel a touch, right? And right. so I'm wondering if they would perceive it as the butterfly, and it would just make it even that would increase their presence and and sort of make distract them even further. Like the butterfly is eating your skin. Basically. All right, Blake, what do we got up next? Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, that was a cool one. But counterproductive, Paris hoped that traffic lights would improve travel in the capital. So instead of, instead of lights, drivers will deal with slower speeds, road signs. It's I'm a bit confused and improving. So I did. Well, I'm, go ahead. Well, um, 
thinking about it this way, because I, I, talk, uh, I saw an article a little while ago, the idea of introducing more routes in the city of, of California, over lanes with the new renovations to, like, you know, things like that, compared it to the of a train, right? If the train things are constantly moving at a slower pace, it's less likely that one car is going to fall over versus another car. And the same idea goes for traffic. So if everything's flowing, everything's moving, but everyone's moving a little bit slower, people think they're moving more because more ground, kind of how they confuse you at Disneyland with all those distractions on the lines that you don't realize you're blind for so long. Yeah. It's kind of like that, yeah. Yeah, so, so to answer your question, I've actually done a little bit of research. Um, I've worked in labs. I, sh- I shouldn't say I've done research, but I've worked in labs on research projects that have looked at varying factors in um, transportation safety. And so th- there's there's a ton of it, it's really fascinating to me how little changes on the road affect driver behavior. So I feel like these with the roundabouts, uh, th- th- they're uh Reasoning here is that they'll pay more attention to the pedestrians and less pe- less attention to lights, right? So if you're if you're always into this roundabout, is um, you know paying attention to a light, you're less likely to you're you're always looking for your sort of in and you're making a right turn. You know it's easy to gauge right turns because you can you can gauge oncoming traffic, but if you're at a light, then you can't gauge oncoming traffic as easily when you want to make a left there's a couple things going on but some of the other tricks that i've seen used this is very similar to like narrowing the lanes on a freeway Mm -hmm. to get people to drive slower right if they feel like they have less margin of error on the road then they're going to take you know they're going to drive slower um you see this on california freeways and oh yeah yeah yeah. so so especially like i don't know anecdotally when i'm on the road and I see those those really um, compacted lanes. I drive really carefully because I know you know one small move and I'm hitting the car next to me. Um, we're on rural rural roads. Uh, that's a mouthful. Uh, I see sort of a uh, an increase in speed. Like I know we never never uh, engaged in illegal activity when we were living in Idaho, but uh, I know plenty of other people that did drive way over the speed limit. Uh, and then another trick that you can use is like to decrease the lane line dashes. So, so those dashes on the road, right, that indicate the lanes. If you um, sort of decrease the distance between those, you can you can affect your global optical flow rate. And we've talked a little bit about this before. That's just how things approach your field of view. And uh, so, by by uh, what am I saying? By, reducing the distance it feels like you're going faster you drive slower yeah i guess now that you explain it it makes a little bit more sense because to me it was like okay you're instead of just using lights now you're replacing people you pay attention to much more many different things so limits but if there's like behavior that's already mad if you make small changes to roads and road signs and that produces a different type of driving behavior that makes a little more sense. right yeah but they can't do it could they do it so drastically i mean like downtown uh, where we live in downtown Oceanside, uh, uh, um, they changed one of the roads into a one-way road, and I don't know how many times I got to an accident because I turned onto a one-way street the wrong way because it used to be a two-lane street. You know what I mean? Well, that's a matter of, like, like let's say you just moved there, you'd be used to it, and it probably would be safer. But because you're getting used to that change, it might be a little bit. And you might argue the same thing um, in this case where they're talking about the roundabouts, but it still leads you to four different directions uh, versus, you know, a one-way street. You used to be go, you used to be able to go down that way. Roundabouts just change the the way that you interact with that intersection. The one that you're talking about kind of changes your whole paradigm about that street. Yeah, because that's almost having to rewire your entire mental model for what you know about this particular road. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, those darn kids keep messing up all my roads. All just right. Go outside and yell at clouds. What's up next? So a lot of Google stories today, but uh, this one first kicks off with Google Maps. So they're introducing a do list that lets you map out potential itineraries or bucket lists and then share them with your friends. There are a few preset lists such as favorites and want to go, which you can fill out by tapping the save button when searching for points of interest. You can also create new lists as well and share them out with your friends. 
this is going to be super helpful for me because my buddies, ever since I moved to California, have like hit me up with these random like dirt biking trails and stuff like that that I always forget about and never know actually where they are. Lose the text message, change the phone. So I always have that kind of stuff saved now. Right. Uh, I'm I'm sensing a Human Factors Cast bucket list in. This is really uh, neat. I'm trying <laughs> to uh, <laughs> I did it again. I did it again. Good one. Uh, maybe that'll be the episode title. I did it again. Uh, oops. <laughs> Oops, I did Oops. it again. Uh, Britney Spears reference. Yes, on I like Human it. Factors cast. All right. Uh, that'll be it. So, no, this is neat because uh, I got plenty of places that friends tell me about and I always forget, like you said. Uh, and just to be able to crowdsource interesting places to go, things to see. Um, I almost said people to do. But uh, on that note, I'm just I'm going to go get a drink. You guys talk about this because I... I I'm, he needs a break. Yeah, Billy, what I'm, do you think about I'm this? I'm messing this up really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, Billy, do you have any anything to well, add about the two? I know lists? a lot of things that come. Well, I know a lot of things come out of Google, but I just don't care. Like, I, I, know, I mean, like, it's cool and everything, but eh, like, I don't see the point of this is but what Billy, I'm saying. Billy, I know you personally. So and you are always, always looking for stuff to do. Now, yes. what if I could say, Billy, you got to check yes. this place out because it's this, this, and this. This is a place okay. This is a place where you can archive. You're like, yeah, I want to go there. I want to do this. I want to see that. If you're going on a trip, uh, to be able to save those locations and access that folder while you're there to just kind of, oh, yes, I want to visit this place while I'm here. And I totally would have forgotten unless I was looking into this folder. So that's that's more like what it's for. Yeah, but doesn't Google already do that? I could go open my Google and say, what's there to do in the city? And it'll bring me up a bunch of things and events in my area. No, and Facebook does the same thing, too. You're absolutely right. But if you are a, a steadfast re- researcher and like to research the place that you're going first and spend a lot of time online looking at interesting places that you could go to hit one button and save them to a map... And then you don't have to go Google what is there to do nearby. You've already done that. You're in the moment. You can just open up your folder and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go over there to this burger place that I looked up. And it's got five-star review on Yelp. And it's everyone says it's the best burger in New York or whatever. Hmm, okay. I feel like I'm not selling you on this. Not really. But, I mean, like, I think it's one of those things that I would probably have to see and use to actually see the benefit of. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you might not be able to get the utility just okay. from this pitch. Hold up. Hold up. I got this. Okay. So, Billy, okay. Uh, personally, you have revealed to me that you have purchased a, uh, I don't even know what to call it. It's like a, a card game where you sort of have to interact with other people, and this game forces you to interact with people in ways that you typically wouldn't. And you made it your New Year's resolution to expend the entire deck uh, by interacting with people at certain places. Now, what yeah, you could, sneaky card game. There you go, sneaky card game. Now, what you could do with this Google Maps is look for places, ideal places. Like, let's say you know you're going to take the train down to San Diego, and you're going to be in San Diego, and you're going to look for interesting places to go and play this card game. You can save them all to the map ahead of time, and then when you're there in San Diego, you load them up on your phone and go, okay, I'm going to go there and f- fulfill this task. Uh, I mean, I see where you're coming from, but I, and I don't want to be a negative Nancy about the idea of Google because Google has made a lot of things that I didn't think I needed until I actually did it, and then I totally needed it. Like, like you know, the Google where you play a song, where a song's playing, you can actually hold up your phone to it, and it'll tell you what song it is. But <laughs> I, I, I have to see I just have to see it. I'm just a little hesitant on it. Because it's like I could do that with my list, you know. I could just pre-plan everything, like you do, or something like that. That's okay. I'm not trying to sell you on Google, and this this episode of Human Factors Cast is not brought to you by Google, so there's no no harm in in bad. Actually, us by Bing. Go to Bing, please. Someone go to Bing, please. It's lonely. <laughs> Somebody help them. Help them, please. <laughs> Well, Billy's still on the fence, so I'm going to hop to the next story. Let's go on to the next one. All right. So the man, the myth, the legend, CEO C- Elon Musk, spoke about the potential of brain interfaces. This is a really cool story. What? In which, you did it. Okay. You did it. So, so he discusses something he calls a neural lace. 
that would interface directly with the brain, letting users communicate thoughts with computers with much more bandwidth and much less latency than in the current that is currently possible via input mechanisms like keyboards and mice. That's insane to me. Human so, brain interfaces? Yeah. Well, the, the latency thing. Sorry. So the need for the, <laughs> the need for this, he said on Monday in, in Dubai. It's awesome. He's in Dubai. This is just too good. So you could you could achieve a symbiosis between human and machine intelligence, and maybe solves the control problem and the usefulness problem. Guys, this is some heavy stuff. Plus, got with pretty much one of Blake's fiction. Oh man! You know if Elon Musk. Behind this 100%, and I am intrigued by this, and I have always kind of wanted this. But then something you said off the air earlier really made me contemplate whether or not we do want a human brain interface because that would put people like you and I. Uh, well, what, <laughs> and I would also be for sure. in your uh, Only if you got a crack, some, uh, basically, turn which will happen. Yeah. If you do this kind of stuff, you play this realm, right. something bad happens. I mean, but it, it's, it's in the future, it's crazy, but not that far away, it's latency, what's possible now, your interactive mind is nuts. So, but I don't think we lose our jobs. Well, yeah, you have to you have to consider like, oh, I think this thought instead of this thought. Now, okay, we're not interfacing with these uh, physical tools anymore, but now the machines understand pattern, and that's got to, there's got to really be the whole change. user experience for brain interface. I mean, it's just a different, it's just a different medium. Yeah, how the heck? That was an idea of what you guys said a long time ago after the epidemic. Uh, this is that people uh, in hospitals have a physical condition as well. You have to lead to all these a mental emotional stability of the person will this app work will it work more or less right well uh last week on the show which i'm sure you guys listened we talked a little bit about um the uh locked in syndrome that's oh yes there you go so it's, so so people are making strides towards this thing yeah and the the locked in syndrome thing is interesting because that's that idea has been around for a long time people looking at that and i remember this one story when i was still in like undergrad about that where a guy was literally asked to do it type of you thing. Know, they uh, yes and no which is but elon musk saying it now you know it's going to be like the hyperloop where there's going to be engineering teams going okay how can we do this or like spacex where and he's just gonna he's and then the did the, the day when you can interface your brain to your tesla and then and then automation and then you just drive by thinking and then and then and then blake what's up next this is yeah this is getting nuts all right so we got an uber story <laughs> so, so, oh so uber is making moves this sounds like nick picked this one so they're making moves to expand the scope of their flying car experiment this what is, yeah, too tight <laughs> <laughs> so the company just hired nasa engineer mark moore who worked with the federal agency as an advanced aircraft engineer Moore is known for his current interest in vertical takeoff and landing craft for short-haul urban flight and the feasibility of helicopter-like vehicles. Ooh, helicopter-like cars. That's going to be sick. Drones. Yeah, there you go. So Moore will act as a director of engineering at Uber Elevate. Ooh, that's tight. Which is what the ride-hauling company calls its exploration of airborne on-demand drives. Well, this sure certainly sounds a lot like a prediction I made, uh, uh, what, four weeks ago? So, <laughs> Mark Moore is in Nick's pockets, or the other way around. <laughs> but this is... I'm not going to say the yep, words. Yeah, it's hard, right? It's hard! But it, this is... the God, I gotta get a thesaurus okay but the part this about is interesting <laughs> exactly so the this is interesting part two <laughs> yeah oops i did it again this is interesting uh so the vertical takeoff and landing bit is what i thought really pulled my eyes to this because this sounds like a spacex thing because the dragon does the exact same maneuver and that's their whole big like landing on platforms in the water and all that so i was actually surprised that you didn't see like a spacex person being pulled i mean NASA engineer Mark Moore, surely you are a baller, but it, it it sounded a lot like what SpaceX has been trying to perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the difference here is that this is so he's he's uh, the vertical takeoff is with is with quadcopters. I think uh, that Moore is interested in um, because you can't really use rockets in the city. Oh, come so, on, uh, I know. Uh, so, so they're they're going to basically be using 
uh, either single person drones or, um, you know, four person drones. I don't know. There's, there's a company in China that tried doing single person drones earlier last year and they actually got it to fly. So this is, this is here. It's, it's here. It's happening. You're going to have a drone show up on your doorstep. You hop in and you fly to your destination. It's awesome. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Billy, are you going to be willing to sit in the thing and fly to, would you, would you Uber to the studio? If you could fly there. You know, I don't know about that. I mean, like, how affordable is it? Is it super expensive? Is it cheap? What do you think? Well, I would I would assume it costs a little bit more than a typical Uber. Maybe even more than an Uber X. It's uh, probably going to cost a fair amount because you got to think about where they're going to land. So it's going to... There's only limited, well, they'd have, limited like helicopter space or like helicopter type landing pads, but then they'd have to be well, able no, no, to no. land anywhere. If they have a single person drone, they could make that the size of a car, maybe slightly bigger. So they could land in like a parking lot or something. Yeah, but now you're talking about things that are moving along with it on the ground. So if it's a parking lot, you'd have to wait and be cleared to land when there's no cars moving at all. Right. Well, if it's a personal residence, you could park in like the... the you're going to park in the parking park, space? Yeah. Oh my God. That's going to be awesome. But yeah, that's the other question I have. Um, not even the idea of cost. And I'm sorry, but it's just all these things. I'm just like, eh. You know what I mean? But I, I don't. I'm not a negative person. I swear. It's, it's just a, a little. Story. It's just a little dull to you. No, 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 no. It's not even that. It's just there's questions I have. Like one, there's a lot of wires and crazy people. What's to stop anybody from just trying to shoot me out of the sky? Two. Most cities aren't going to allow something like this in there. Come on. Oh, hold on, though, man. Most cities wouldn't allow Uber or Lyft for a while, and now yeah. And no, there was, there was no a- Austin, Dallas. Um, where else is there not? Um, there's uh Denver, Colorado, still don't allow Uber in their cities. Okay, so that's what five out of fifty. Yeah. So and then and then there's I this whole I, thing. Those are only the three cities I know of. Wasn't there an ad on the Super Bowl too for Amazon's uh, air delivery? Yeah, there and was. And so, so people are warming up to that idea too. At first, people were like, "Drones delivering my stuff? How is that going to work?" And now it's warming up. So, <laughs> so enough, maybe I'm wrong. I'm calling it. In a couple of years, you'll be Ubering to the studio in an Uber Elevate for on on the cheap, pennies on the dollar. I would imagine so. If they use electric power, they could get this thing from point A to point B really easily with some solar panels on it. Yeah. We got engineers working on this thing. All right, Blake, what's up next? All right, so another Google story. So they've been sending notices to developers worldwide stating it's their intention to limit the visibility or remove apps from the Play Store that violate the company's user data policy. For most devs, the violation seems to be simple. They lack a privacy policy. So this one I was a little up and down about. I mean, in a, in a way... I've definitely been an Android user for a while and have swapped to the iPhone, but I remember the app store just being very crowded with apps that weren't so weren't the best. There's a lot of crap, and they're cleaning up the streets. They are literally taking everything that doesn't consider the user's privacy and saying, see you later. Yeah, which is good. It's good for the user. And it's even good for developers because now it's going to be really good competition versus just oh, yeah. the market being bloated. Oh, yeah. But do you guys know what a zombie app is? You know, I I wish Steam would. I really wish Steam would do this too. I mean, seriously. That's a good point. I wonder if they have loopholes like this. They actually just got rid of Steam Greenlight for that very reason. Yeah, that's a shame too, because it was really a cool idea. Paper, you know. Steam Greenlight. Steam Greenlight was a place where uh, developers were able to toss up their games or game ideas and would say, "Yes, no." And then, if they got enough votes, they would be brought in. I almost put it in. I almost put it into the news this week, but I felt like, uh, you know, just it, it wasn't quite there for the human factor stuff. But this people interface with, and so I felt like that was there. Oh, a lot, sure, a lot of people yeah. took advantage of Steam Greenlight. Yeah. Oh, it's a bummer. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see here. Hang on. It, a zombie app is. Let's see here. Uh. Sorry, this, uh, uh, how many of the apps effectively? Invisible to consumers. So so an app that is to consumers, like you've downloaded it, it's on your phone, but you never use it. Oh, see, I've got a couple of those, but they actually were useful. 
I don't know. Oh, and in case you're wondering, an app that it is zombie if it appears two out of three days in the top 300 lists on the App Store. Um, Wait, so that's what they're considering zombie apps? Yeah, so so just, just crapware, essentially, that sits on your phone. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, clean up app crap. <laughs> oh, that'd be a good episode title too. Zombie app crap. I say did it again or zombie app crap. Another zombie crap. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll stick with that. Balls. All right, what's up next. All right, so this one comes from Spotify. So Spotify is teaming up with Weather to build a new service called Climatune. So Climatune, like it sounds, will make a playlist that it will make playlists that are based on weather in your location in real time and the mood that it creates. So this could be fun. Not interesting. Not like interesting. Me. You almost did it. Could be fun. I don't I don't really know how I feel because I don't know what kind of tunes they would pick and if he like builds the user who is on Spotify happen to be <laughs> I, I using just okay. weather. This is this is what I imagine. <laughs> this is what I imagine. With this app going, every time it rains, you know, I'm only happy when it rains. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Every there time, it is. every time. I feel like it'll play the same songs over and over and over again, depending on the you weather. Know, I like, I got this with you. I this idea, but you know what else I would always, I would also like them to act, Spotify to do? I'd love Spotify to ever so often with this idea being like, okay, in Denver, Colorado, or I don't know, in California, San Diego, California today, it's raining. So we got Michael Bolton here actually make. A Captain playlist Jack about the Sparrow. weather. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that would be cool. You know, just local artists or famous artists who want to get on, pick like 10 or 15, just make a place for you about the weather. I mean, take it a step further. Yeah. Show them stuff I've never heard before, you know, or might not tend to listen to. Right. So so I do want to mention, though, one thing Woodrow and I talked a little bit about last year, or not last year, last mm. uh, week. Um, Why don't you just meet him then and get rid of us? <laughs> I'm well, I, hey, no, it's a news story. So we talked a little bit about MIT's emotion detecting band last week. This is like a watch that you basically wear on your wrist. Uh, and we brought up the home of the future where basically if you have something like Amazon's Alexa, uh, it will basically just uh, it, it will understand what you are trying to accomplish just based on your mood. So like if you come home and you're sad and you're like angry or something, it'll order you a pizza and you don't want to cook. Like if it hears you say you don't want to cook dinner and your blood pressure, blood pressure is really high and you're just angry, it'll order you a pizza. I'm wondering if the same thing can be interfaced with this emotion detecting band for music. So you're in an angry mood, you get, you get metal rage against the machine or something. <laughs> like, there you go. Yeah. But on that fun. note, if you're in a bad mood, does it? Do you really want an app that'll put you in a more angry mood? <laughs> it might be cathartic. It might you might be able to set user preferences. So there used to be this. Um, I don't know if it's still a thing. I'm gonna check really quick. But there used to be this website called Chill Rage, uh, and <laughs> it used to play music. You, you, it was a. Sl it was the website's interface uh, was literally just a slider, and you uh, basically slid this slider back and forth to between chill and rage. Yeah, between oh chill goodness. and rage. And uh, oh, it doesn't look like it's still a thing. Oh, it used to be a thing. It was so brilliant. Uh, and you just kind of set it to where you're feeling right now. Are you feeling you feeling uh, angry, upset? Uh, music based on that. It was it was a really good. And I'm I'm I think Spotify is trying to do that with AccuWeather. All right, Blake, what's up next? All right, so Valentine's Day. In case anybody forgot, it's tomorrow. Go get oh, some flowers crap. or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> so far, too many singles are going to swipe their way into a bad date, right or left. So, apologize if I messed this app name up, but Sapio, 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 Sapio. There it is. I think I don't know. Yeah, why not? Sapio, Sapio. Hang on, for those interested listeners, it's S A P I O. Yeah. S A P I O. So it's a new dating app that attempts to pair like-minded singles in a decidedly non-technical way. So through their shared interests, intelligence levels, and conversation ability. Now, Billy. Billy has tried this out, right? He's trying to get <laughs> Even this to he's work. In, he's engaged, and he's trying to. I mean, out. like, look, I, I, like, I read the story and I downloaded the app. I'm engaged, but he has already told me that I may test things like this for the sake of the show. And we thank Kia for that because she's a real trooper. For the sake of the show. For the <laughs> sake of the show. So, have you gotten any hits, or how was? Yeah, she doesn't listen to the show anyway. Not like she'll ever know. Oh, there you go. 
So, <laughs> what did you think about like the questions they asked you? Did you feel like you were actually going to get matched up with somebody that was like you? Well, that's the thing. I don't. I mean, like, there's so many questions. It goes on for. Ever. Ooh. This so this kind of reminds me of the premise behind OK Cupid's. Uh, they used to have a thing. I don't know. It's been forever since I've used OK Cupid. And actually, to make a quick point, uh, I actually met my partner on OK Cupid. And dating apps are becoming more commonplace now. So it's cool that they're taking these new approaches. But OK Cupid had this um, uh, sort of. It's like you ask questions and say like I believe it was user made questions, and right. You would basically answer on a Likert scale, and you know, one to five, I strongly disagree to strongly agree, and then it would ask you, my ideal partner would answer this, and then would say, this is how important to me. So it was, it was a three-dimensional scale, hmm. right? Three, yeah, three-dimensional scale. And, uh, so, and then it paired you up with people who answered correctly based on those responses. And I'm wondering if this app is kind of based on that. Is that your experience, Billy, where you kind of just answer questions? Well, and... it really does feel that way because it seems like what happens is Ooh. you answer, right? And then they have they have a list of questions that they answer, and then you have to answer the same thing. But it's still the swiping thing, like swiping left, swiping right. It still does the Twitter thing. Like I'm swiping currently right Twitter now. Twitter or uh, Tinder? Back forth. It's the same thing. Hmm. Huh, that's interesting. That's another But I mean, it has questions on there instead of profiles. So you don't have a profile, you have just a crap ton of questions. Oh, is it like they, you swipe yes or no on questions? No, no, you swipe yes or no on the person of interest, but instead oh. of a profile like, I like to have fun and listen to music, music is life, uh, it says mostly things like, hey, it, what's the worst thing about your generation? Oh my gosh, that's awesome! What three bands would you want to eliminate from the face of this earth? Or, uh, or <laughs> what's your out. best? What's your what's your happiest? Uh, po- what is topic you can go on about for hours without getting tired? Star Wars. All right. So, so <laughs> one other piece with this, the um, the next web, which is this the source for this, or at least where we got it from. They uh, they say it matches singles based on intelligence levels, and now I'm wondering if they have somewhere. I don't know if you haven't got to it yet or whatever, but they uh, there might be an embedded IQ test in there. And now I want to talk about this this um, sort of mismatch between how you see yourself and how the world sees you, because I can totally see you know someone with this app going on a date and being like, oh my god, that was the stupidest woman ever, or the stupidest man ever, whatever you're into, and. <laughs> And uh, I, we're we don't take sides here on Human Factors Cast. Everyone is equally stupid. Let's just be clear. Uh, so, <laughs> you know what? I'd argue that men are a little bit more stupid. Bunch honestly. of dummies. Anyway, so <laughs> that being said, though, what happens if you get that and you go, "Wait, this site is supposed to match me based on intelligence"? Would you then reject the app because you feel like you are more intelligent, or would you introspect and say, "Am I really not that?" Uh, you you would definitely reject the app. So they're they're <laughs> they're uh, skirting dangerous territory here. All right, uh, what's Honestly, next? Yeah, when Billy was talking about the amount of questions they had up front, I would reject it right away. Really? No, I feel like the more information you gather about a person, the easier it is to match you up. Yeah, I mean, you and I are different people. I would yeah, I don't like what? telling apps too much information. I guess, and I haven't I mean, dated but through an app. Problem before. with it is though. Here's the problem with this thing. The one problem with it is is that these are a lot of questions that you would ask while you're on the date. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's not, not like okay, any many topics. So so that's fair, but it's not like it's revealing the answers to you. It's just pairing you up based on these answers and you can ask these questions in person and then you go, "Oh yeah, I agree with that too." And then and then you just have a whole conversation about it. Like, okay, let's say uh, you know, your answer to that was Mech Warrior. You could go on and on for hours, and their answer was Mech Warrior, and then you come across the subject of Mech Warrior, and then boom. Yeah, yeah. No, I. that's the thing. I don't see that with this app. It seems like it's just an elaborate form of Tinder with questions, but maybe there is some, like, hidden algorithm here that I'm not realizing yet. I don't know. Maybe. Uh... I mean, it is a brand spanking new app, right? Yeah, maybe you should give it a try and report back to us next week. Undercover. Right. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> just right, uh, just don't let Kian know. All right, what's up next? Jeez. All <laughs> right, so we got another story from Google. So Google researchers have fi- figured out a way to make that common TV trope enhance a reality. Enhance! Or at least get pretty darn I close. The, I hate the fact that that's not real. I do too. And I always love that it's basically the space bar to make it happen. But so the system constructs abstract high resolution images of ro- resolution pictures. Sounds simple enough. So the images aren't, aren't real, so they can't serve as evidence in criminal cases. Good to know. So still, it's interesting to see how <laughs> neural networks are getting closer to bringing sci-fi to life. Did you guys take a look at these images that this thing is producing? Yeah, it's pretty incredible what it's producing where it starts, like from I, low to the higher res. Yeah, I can't believe this. And it looks just like what it's describing, like it's that enhanced feature like when you're watching detective shows. Yeah, it really is. Um, this is, uh, there's, so the common trope obviously is, you know, law enforcement or, or uh, whatever, they, they go, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. There's this, uh, fa- uh, there's a GIF online, GIF, however you pronounce it. Uh, I always say GIF, even the creator. Anyway, there's this GIF online where um, someone <laughs> someone's saying enhance, and it's just like the most ridiculous thing, right? It keeps zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. But, I mean, it, to make fun of the trope. But this, uh, yeah, this is, um, this is almost scary. Because if you think about, you know, what kind of quality cameras are out there, if if someone gets a picture from you far away, they might even be able to abstract what you look like. And, uh, man, like, uh, Elise just came back from Africa and she showed me a bunch of pictures she took with her iPhone and the zoom on those, you could literally almost see the animals faces. I can't yeah. imagine that like this is that far off. And as cameras keep getting better, like on phones alone. Oh yeah. It's, it's over. This is real. Yep. Big brother's always going to know where we're at. Yeah. Let's see your face. But it's not municipal in court right now. So that's true. Good. That's true. That's true. Enhance. Enhance. <laughs> Enhance. You have anything else to add about this one, Billy? Not really. I mean, it's just really sad that this thing doesn't exist anymore. I mean, we can't really ever use it in a court case. But the problem is, is you can use. But the problem is, you can use it to investigate and to find people that well, have done the. Right. You know, I saw this car speeding away. I couldn't make out the license plate. Well, now we know the license plate. But then again. You can't use it, so you can't prove it, so you have to find another way of looking at it. I don't even know how this works Look, legally. Here, here's here's the thing. Right now, right now, I doubt there's anything in the law that says you cannot use a, uh, a Google-enhanced image. I bet there's nothing in law right now that says that. I bet there is something. I don't that, know. Maybe. Hang on, hang on. I bet there is something in law, and I'm not a lawyer, but I bet there is something in law that says only unaltered pictures are able to be used within a court of law. Now, there's nothing to say that they couldn't amend that to say um, Google enhanced pictures because it is enhancing it it, it may be used in a court of law. Like, let's say this technology gets really good and it gives you crazy accurate depictions of people. I can see this maybe being a thing in the future but right now i feel like that's where it's at yeah i mean even now you could use it as like a lead generator at the worst oh right? yeah yeah oh this looks like that person it's all cool right. stuff right all right what's up next this our, is our last story yeah all right yep last story of the day so good old scientist from junior high bill nye saves the world will debut on netflix bill, on april bill, 21st bill 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 so, bill bill <laughs> bill bill so this is bill, the day before earth day for those of you that don't know uh, and it's it's going to have 13 episodes that seek to debunk anti-scientific claims topics random sex to alternative to climate change. If you want to know more... I find out... Seek- what did you find out, Billy? <laughs> find wrongers. Uh, oh. Oh. Bill, will help. Bill Nye will... She is, man. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's the one thing I... You know what? It, he actually brings in talk shows. Talk, I never understood. I, I tried to look up. Is there actually any refuting glow? Oh, yeah, there's a few. I think it's okay. like 98% in cause, in cause climate. Um, so, yeah, there are a couple scientists out there that do not 
believe in climate climate change. But there's no credible support, right? I mean, like, I don't see any papers here. You know, there's no scientific discussion of whether it is or is not, right? Uh, there are a ton of scientific papers, and I can lead you to several of them. <laughs> um, but that's a that's okay, a political topic. But um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely both sides of the fence, science wise. Like it, in terms of papers, put in journals, the arguments are there. Um, I, mm-hmm. I think one has more than the other. Uh, but any, anyway, yeah. I'm Our, sure uh, Bill will uh, tackle that on his show. I know that's like a pet oh, thing. Oh, I was hoping this was the Bill Nye the Science Guy thing. Oh. Where are they? Oh, there's one. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, Bill, it definitely Bill. wasn't hyped that they used a different sequence. But, you know, different. Bill, 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 Bill. <laughs> Do you think they're going to actually use the giant talking rat again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Did you guys see the I trailer wish. for this? I did. I did not. Yeah. I'm not looks like a game show. Looks it does. Like, it looks oh. like a Edward Double Dare. Really? Because I, I got a talk show vibe from it. You know, like it was like a panel show more so than anything. So he was going to have people talk about it who are experts and celebrities and comedians, kind of like talk. Oh, well, I guess maybe. Yeah. I, it looked like but that, but combination between that trying to debunk it like a busters type thing in a studio studio have you guys checked out the white project the one uh, with the yeah grant how is that i have no idea what that is eh. That's with grant emahara tori balachi and uh and, Emahara and you are super tight yeah well i've met him a couple times but, but uh, yeah yeah no it's fine it's good it's like the mythbusters show they're not doing anything super just like uh, net mind-blowing Mind blowing, but it's a fun show. I, I watch it. So uh, you know, I'm 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 hopeful at least because Ben Engineer. So he focuses mainly on making things and kind of explaining the hard science behind those things. Uh, but I mean, he is a he's a really smart right. dude, and he understands the importance of the science of humans definitely, especially when it comes to things like climate change. So I'm I'm hoping that the show will be good. Uh, I've the older I get, the the less time I feel like I have television shows, and I kind of spend my time a little bit more selectively. But hopefully he'll get me sucked in. All right. That's going to be it for Human Factors News this week. Uh, if you guys have a news story that you want to hear us uh, talk about, let us know. Send us uh, an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. You can also send suggestions for Human Factors. Guess that, Human Factor or Human Factors 20 questions at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. So let's go ahead and switch gears and play game. We're going to play Guess All That. All right. Yeah, Guess That Human Factors. Oh, this is a yeah. game where Billy will read the description of a human factors construct, topic, research area, or pretty much anything else. Uh, and we're going to have to guess what it is from that description. Uh, we sourced this week's topics from a few of our colleagues, but again, we want to hear from you guys. So send them in to humanfactorscast at gmail.com. All right, Billy, what do we got? The distribution of between user and G or between different team members. Distribution. Distribution of functions. Distribution between functions. Function. Okay, the distribution of functions between users and technology, and or technology. between different team members. You can only use the term as a pipeline in your guys' field. This is uh, <laughs> this flow. He may be, but no. Oh. <laughs> Girl, I like the way you work, Flo. No. no. All right. Dead. I'm trying to think. It worked. I'm working on. That's it. That's a good one. The function, the distribution of functions between users and technology. Yeah, that one's tripping me up, too. Um... All right. I, do you want to call this one? Call this what, do we got? what do we got? Hey, baby. Why don't you and me go out to make some function allocation? Oh, oh okay. that's really horrible. <laughs> there. Anyway, that makes sense. I couldn't use that as a pickup line, though. I I mean, I, you know what? You're, you're not giving yourself enough. I guess we got All right. The next one is how thick measurements and health problems, but includes thinking, perceiving, remembering, imagining, conceiving, judging, and reading. Well, at the end, a decision. Could okay. be... Can you read how the people think, make judgments, solve problems? Mental this models? includes think, perceive, remember, and the name. What is cognition? Oh my gosh, Blake, put your hand in the air. You got right. Woo! <laughs> nice. We're, <laughs> we're one and nice. We're, actually, we're two. If we went from 
of those couple of weeks. No, this, this is fresh. Shit. Right, we're we're two, right, two right, of the right. year. All right, I'm going to throw you a little bit of an easy one since you got some <laughs> moments of fresh. Based on oh, didn't even get it out of his mouth and he got it. That's a human factor scientist. Actually, shoot, I should, I should, uh, I should let you finish, Billy, because probably listeners uh, probably would have got it if you kept going. All right, 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 right. Go ahead and read the okay. next one. All right, all right. The cost safe and performance it includes decision making and communication. It also involves managing one's own levels, stress, and fatigue. Hmm. Part from the so that the cognitive and social skills contribute to safe and task performance. Includes decision decision making and decision. It also involves managing one's own levels, stress, and fatigue. So this is like, um, so you're monitoring all things, managing them. I wanted to say team situation awareness, but he said SA in there, so yeah. it can't be that. Cognitive social. Aspect. I don't know why. Yeah. The cognitive social contribute to safety and efficient task performance. Safety and efficient task performance. Okay. Cognitive social skills that contribute to safety and task performance. Come on, don't you like seventh level like psychology like and stuff? Science <laughs> certainly am. My cobwebs are obviously dusty. Yeah, yeah, we got to dust that. <laughs> so this is guess that you can't ask questions or anything. This is maybe we can. <laughs> we can list up. I give it on human. So yeah, yeah. Maybe attack shooting, but able to communicate with their teammates, maintain awareness, anticipate future events, as well as perform tasks of kick ball well. Yeah, that's I a mean, situation footballer is a soccer player here. It does sound like situation awareness, but it uses the word situation awareness. In it. Uh, well, in a situation? I, I don't know. Situational awareness? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to go hard guess. Situ Non-technical skill. Non skill. Oh, hence that the first part that was social weird. social skills yeah. that contribute to safe and task performance. Where did you get? That's a weird thing. That, that, that was hard. Seven. I wonder who... Uh, I, I literally had a couple people just write all these down in a... In a we're gonna find technical <laughs> yeah, We're gonna find you. All right. What's up next? Let's make. Let's do like three more. Two more. The process of reaching a judgment, choosing an option or course of action to meet the needs of a given situation. Decision making. Uh, All right. So we're what, three for three. Yeah. What's, what's that? Three All out right. of five or something? Yeah, something like that. All right. Here it is. Uh -huh. Today, a time error where an action decision was not intended, but led to an undead outcome. With Immediate consequences. Ooh, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> what did you think it was? I was gonna say error. Uh, so we'll say it one more time. A terror where action or decision was not intended, but led to an under. I think God, it's error omission. Yeah, say that too. You are. Oh, was it error of commission? Active errors. Errors. Yeah. All right, we got three one more of a team or a system. It's is it? Additional steps that you an error forcing a receiver may stay back open instead. I don't know the best option I recommend design. I don't know the name of it. Okay, well, that's the prettiest term. So, if you're deleting files, are you sure you want to delete them? Evidently, if you delete in this file, it goes to your recycle bin instead before it's actually deleted. Air recovery refers. It's like a thing. I don't know, man. Fear for sure. Fail safe error. I, Close. I, I know the right. names of these dang things. I just can't. Them. I have no idea. All right. Yes. Yeah, so dang it. We got like what Billy would in situation if you hit. I know. I know. Well, that would be a good idea to have. That would be redundancy. Oh, redundancy. is it for, for sure redundant? Conflict. That's for some whole yeah. specifics, but not the general. We'll Jeez. count a point five, so we're... we're... A point five, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> we got redundancy. <laughs> redundancy. You're we got redundancy. That's a bummer. <laughs> you today, guys. You're down by one, but I believe you can make a comeback. But that's it for today, everyone. If you have any suggestions for these games, topics, or news stories you want us to cover... You can go follow us on social media. We're every uh, we're on the Human Factors Facebook site. We are also uh, on our SoundCloud. You can comment there. You can reach us at H Factors Podcast on Twitter. 
send us an email, humanfactorscast at gmail.com. Or if you're really uh, courageous and want to hear your own voice, you can leave us a mail at 901-646-143. That's 901-646-1H. If you like what we're doing and want to help us out, you can support us on our Patreon site at patreon.com slash human. Be sure to like, subscribe, and review us on iTunes and make those reviews good. It helps us out, makes us feel good. We can bring a smile <laughs> to your face uh, each and every week. We're also on the Google Play Store, like I said, SoundCloud, or whatever your favorite podcast directory. I'm on Android. I tend to like Cast Addict for that. I want a th- panel on the show <laughs> for today. <laughs> Blake Arnsdorf, where can our listeners find you? Thank you guys for another great show. You can find me at UX Chill Row on Twitter. And Billy Hall, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter or on YouTube at Comstar Cleric. Excellent. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for tuning in to Factors Cast. Until next time, everyone. It depends. It depends. Oops, I made another zombie crap. It depends. It depends. It depends. <laughs>